or so, I'm gonna show you why your Chromebook is way better than just a simple web-based typewriter. Um, I'm a big proponent of Chromebooks. I love using them in the classroom and using them personally. I'm uh, presenting from my Chromebook right now. But many people treat Chromebooks like fancy typewriters. They can visit websites, they can type Google Docs, which is all true, but they can do so much more than that. In this session, we're gonna be looking at 10 different ways that you can use your Chromebooks to do fun, creative, and interesting things. We're gonna talk about audio, video, and images. We'll look at some tab tips and tricks, my favorite apps and extensions, and way more. So um, my name is John. Again, I'm a former classroom teacher, taught high school science in the Detroit, Michigan area. I was a high school principal as well, and now I um, spend my time helping schools use Chromebooks in interesting and unique ways. I'm the author of uh, this book back here, The uh, Chromebook Classroom. So a lot of the tips that I'll share with you today actually come right out of uh, this volume. Well, let's jump in and get started with our first uh, tip. We're gonna do some tab tips and tricks. You may actually wanna go ahead and practice some of these while you're watching this video. It might be a, a useful thing for you. The first thing I wanna show you is um, one of my favorite tips. So if you if you look at my tabs, so I've got a, you know lots of tabs open. Um, look at these first three tabs, Gmail, Calendar, and Drive, compared with you know some of the other ones that I have open. Those first three tabs are pinned in place. I'm sure you may have had a situation where you accidentally closed a tab. Pinning them will uh, solve or fix that problem. To pin a tab, you're just gonna right click on one of your existing tabs. We get the right uh, click menu option. One of the selections you'll see is pin tab. Now when you pin a tab, it closes it, squashes it down, uh, and slides it all the way to the left. So you can see now they're all uh, locked up there. I pin the tabs that I use most frequently. So for me, Gmail, Drive, Calendar, I've always got those open all the time, and so they're always pinned there. So that's your first tip, uh, pinning uh, tabs. Now, uh, despite our best efforts, um, I am uh, very confident that you have accidentally closed a tab before. There is a little trick that you can use to get that tab back. It's super simple. You're just gonna press the Control key, the Shift key, and the T on your keyboard at the same time. Control Shift T will reopen a recently closed tab. I use this all the time, probably a dozen times a day when I'm uh, looking for things. This is also a marvelous classroom management technique. If you walk over to a student to um, check in with them and you see them frantically closing tabs as you approach, there's a good chance they are on websites that they would prefer you not know about. All you have to do is reach over and press Control Shift T and it will reopen all of the tabs that um, you uh, that they recently closed. It's a marvelous tool. I'm gonna move on now to another set of uh, tricks and tips. I wanna talk about the Omnibox. Okay, the Omnibox is what Google calls the URL, the search bar that appears at the top of your screen. Yes, just that big white box uh, that you type in web addresses and Google searches into. The reason it's called the Omnibox is because you can do more than just visit websites. You can do all kinds of interesting things. For example, I can do a search for set a timer for 10 minutes and Google search has a timer built right into it. So if you need to uh, set a timer in your classroom, you have 10 minutes of silent reading or a uh, self-directed activity, just Google it, set a timer for, for however many minutes, and this is what you'll get. You get a little alarm um, at the end when the timer goes off. So that's a, a one example of an Omnibox trick. It's something that's built in that's not readily um, obvious. Um, I'm gonna give you another one. You may have uh, done this one. I use this one all the time. Um, you can uh, use a calculator. So if I just type in two plus uh, five into the Omni box, it will bring up a calculator, which I can use right on the screen here. I have a calculator app on my Chromebook, but sometimes it's just easier to type it right in and get simple calculations and answers. This will also even do some graphing, some algebraic uh, graphing as well. Something to be aware of um, if you would prefer your students not to be able to use a calculator um, in class. I'm going to show you one more. This one is pretty slick. Um, this will only work if you have an Android phone. 
Um, I do have the, uh, the Google Pixel to match my Chromebook. And uh, it's pretty slick. All I have to do is uh, find my phone. I just type that right into the search box and it will identify my phone and uh, ring for me. I'm gonna press the ring button and there it goes. So anywhere in the world that I am, I can use that to find my phone as long as my phone is connected to a data connection. Again, that's only gonna work if you have an Android device connected to your Google account. Um, let's keep moving on. Uh, tip number three, I wanna show you a really simple uh, trick that you can use to um, get more bookmarks on your bookmarks bar. Um, so let me just go to uh, a website uh, so I'm going to just bookmark this page right here, okay? So you, to bookmark, you're just going to press that star at the end of the URL bar. And when I add that, it's going to put it in, but it's going to include the full title of the uh, website, which is a lot. So this is plant versus animal cell, then it actually runs off the page. Now this website, uh, if you look at the tab, has a unique icon in the tab. This is called a favicon. It's a technical name for it. Good web designers will add a favicon to their site so it's easy to identify. Now if I can remember what that icon represents, I don't actually need the description for my bookmark. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that bookmark, I'm gonna say edit, and where it currently says name, I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna just leave that entire thing blank and empty. And when I hit save, I have the bookmark still, but it's just this nice small icon that I can recognize. And I can drag that, you know, put it wherever I want. So you can kind of see my bookmarks uh, bar is just filled with these icons and I can recognize each of these so I know exactly uh, what they are without having that long title to fill up my bookmarks bar. I'm gonna go to uh, tip number four. We're gonna get a little more technical, a uh, little more complicated, a little more interesting and exciting now. Uh, tip number four is how to take a screenshot on your Chromebook. Now, screenshots, in my opinion, are one of the most important, basic, and essential things that you can do on a, on a computer. I would say that teachers and students both need to know how to take screenshots. You can use it to document what you did during the class period, um, highlight an issue or a problem that you're having, and make it easier for someone to solve it. There's so many good applications for screenshots. So I'm going to um, show you on a Chromebook. Look, you don't need an extension, you don't need anything, you're just gonna um, use a keyboard shortcut. So on a Chromebook, there are two ways to take a screenshot. The first way is to take a picture of your entire page. So just whatever is on your screen, it's gonna take a picture of. And to do that, you're gonna press the control key and the window switcher key. Now that's kind of a funky one you're probably not familiar with. Um, if you look at the top row of keys on your Chromebook, right above the number six, you should see a symbol that looks kind of like this. It'll depend a little bit on your device. Um, but if you press control on the switcher key, you'll get a little notification in the bottom corner that says, hey, you just took a screenshot. That's the first way. I actually don't use that hardly ever. Um, it's very rare that I will use that one. I more frequently will use the uh, screenshot to take a picture of a partial area of my screen. So I'm gonna press control shift and then the switcher key. My screen goes dim, and then I can select an area of the screen that I wish to capture. Because um, most of the time, I'm trying to grab a button or an icon or something, and uh, I don't want the whole thing. And this you know, saves me a step. I don't have to open up that image and crop it out. I've already done that. Now, what if you want to annotate an image? So you want to highlight something, put an arrow in there, say click this button, or here's the typo, etc. I mean, obviously you could take the screenshot and then dump it into a tool, an image editing tool to um, go ahead and annotate it. But I'm gonna show you how you can do it all in one step. So I have a Chrome extension that I would recommend, which is called Write on Web. Write on Web, it's a free Chrome extension, and when you install it, it gives you very simple drawing tools that you can use to annotate on top of any web page. 
You write your annotations and then you take your screenshot and you've got it all done in one step. So that's tip number four, uh, taking a screenshot and doing some annotations. Now tip number five is pretty exciting. This is brand new. You probably have not even heard about this yet. One of the most common questions that I receive is how can my students edit a PDF file? Now, I'm not a huge fan of editing PDF files. Um, if, Whenever possible, I'd encourage you to use a format that's more you know, editing friendly, like Google Docs or Slides or Drawing or something else. But I do understand that sometimes you bought something off of TPT or um, your textbook company gave you PDFs and you don't really have an option. You now can edit PDF files natively in Chrome OS. You don't have to install an extension. You don't need Kami or Doc Hub. Those are great tools. They do so a lot of extra things that you won't be able to do with this. But if you just want to draw some simple lines, fill out a PDF, um, diagram something, you can do it right from inside um, Chrome itself. You have a PDF. You open it up. This is just some random PowerPoint I just found. Um, you'll notice up in the top right corner of the PDF, there is a edit, a pencil icon. And when you open that pencil icon, you will get some simple annotation tools, very similar to right on web, that allow you to edit that PDF. It's important to note that if you do make any annotations, uh, once you're done, you'll need to download that PDF if you want to save those annotations. If I leave this page, then they're gonna be gone. Uh, another key thing, this feature is only available for Chrome OS 74 and higher. Uh, right now, um, I'm recording this video on May 31st. Most Chromebooks are on 74. Some are still getting there. I would say by the end of the summer, most uh, Chromebooks should, uh, should be on that version of Chrome OS and you shouldn't have any trouble. I wanna talk quickly about some accessibility features for your Chromebook. Now, there are many accessibility features. This could be a whole presentation in and of itself. I just wanna share two with you, two quick accessibility features, not for students who, not for any particular person, everyone could benefit from these accessibility uh, features. Um, the first one, uh, well, the first thing I need to uh, tell you how to do is how to turn on these features. So what you're gonna need to do the first time is you're gonna click in the uh, corner of your screen. I call this the snowman, way up in the top right corner of the Chrome browser. Um, and you're gonna go down to settings. And in the settings page, just do a search for accessibility. I wanna encourage you to turn on this little toggle switch. So where it says show accessibility options in the system menu, yes, you want that turned on. That's it, that's all you have to do. Okay, you'll just have to do that one time. Now you will be able to see everything I'm going to show you right from within the Chrome um, system menu. So that's in the bottom right corner where you kind of log in, log out, check your battery and all of that. So go down there, you're gonna see accessibility. The first one that I wanna highlight for you is called Select to Speak. Um, this is a really interesting one. So uh, what I'm gonna do, let me turn up my volume here is uh, when it's on, you can go to any piece of text, okay? So let's go to uh, select and speak. Um, any piece of text, at the bottom of your screen, you will see this little um, microphone or speaker icon. There's a couple ways to do this, but uh, I usually just click on that icon, and then you highlight the text that you want read. And then it select will select to speak is a Chromebook reader that can read on screen text. And it reads whatever you select. It's great. It works on this is a Google slide presentation. It'll work in Google Docs, any websites, PDFs, any text that appears on the screen. You press that little icon, you highlight what you want read, and it speaks to you. You can adjust the speed of the recording, you can adjust the voice as well. But the Benefit of this is it works everywhere. There are a lot of extensions out there, but some of them work on some web pages and not others. They don't work in Google Docs. This one will, will work pretty much anywhere on the web. That's number one, uh, the first accessibility feature. The second one that I want to show you is gonna be really good for elementary students and uh, students who are slow typers. So um, right below select to speak, so you can see we enabled that one is dictation. 
Dictation is a speech to text tool. Anything that I say will be typed on the screen. So I'm going to go back to my Google slide presentation. Let me just throw a new slide in here just so we don't mess it up what I've got. And I'm going to just click right there. Just like select to speak, there's a little icon. This time it is a microphone. I'm going to click the microphone and start talking. This sentence was typed with the dictation tool, exclamation point. And that's it. Now, those of you who are familiar with some of the dictation features available right now should be pretty excited because this was previously not possible. Google Drive does have a feature, a tool called voice typing, but that tool does not work in the slide uh, itself. It only works in the speaker note um, area. Uh, this dictation tool will work any text field on the internet. It works exactly like it does on your phone, your Android, your uh, iPhone. You know, you click a text box, you start talk, uh, talking. Um, it's great. All you have to do is turn it on and then teach your students how to click that um, little icon and begin speaking. So that's it for accessibility features. There's several more, but those are the two big ones uh, that I wanted to focus on uh, for the day. Let's move on to some extensions. Um, we're going to do this quickly. I won't have time to do demos for everything here, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about them. So I want to share just quickly five awesome extensions that I think anyone can benefit from. Now, extensions are little utilities that sit up in the top right corner of your Chrome browser, and they can do some really interesting, helpful, uh, productivity-focused uh, things. The first uh, Chrome extension that I would highly recommend is a URL shortener. So if you want to send someone to a web link, and that link is this long, that's kind of nasty to put into an email or expect them to type out. This URL shortener with a single click will take that long, gross URL and shorten it into something very manageable that you could type or copy and paste into a document. Um, presentation or email. It also provides you with a QR code if uh, you're using QR codes in your classroom. Number two, this one's uh, a lot of fun and I could give you a dozen different ways to use this. I love using emoji in Google Classroom, Google Drive, and email in the lessons that I create. And when I'm on my Chromebook, I use uh, the emoji keyboard by Joy Pixels, which is a marvelous, uh, simple extension. You just click and you've got access to all the classic emoji that you have on your phone uh, as well. So that's number two. Um, I probably use that one more than any other extension uh, that I have. Number three, this one is awesome. I am actually using this extension right now to record this video. This is Screencastify. Screencastify allows you to take screen video. We already talked about screen capture. Now we're talking about recording video, and um, uh, it's a way for students to demonstrate their learning, uh, to document what they've done, for you to record instructional videos if you're out of the classroom. So that's is my um, favorite extension for recording screencasts. This is one that has been around for a while. I've only actually fairly recently begun using it, but I've really appreciated it. This is Grammarly. Uh, Grammarly does grammar and spell check across the web. Now, if you're inside of um, you know, Google Docs or Sheets, you know, there is spell check built into those. But if you're you know, filling out a Google form, typing an email, or you know, filling out some online um, application, you can't spell check. Grammarly will do it for you. It's really, really good. And uh, I've enjoyed the emails that are being sent. So uh, once a week, I get this kind of summary email. It tells me how many words I typed over the last week, my most common mistake, how my vocabulary usage is. It's really interesting. Um, so I love Grammarly. I think both students and um, uh, teachers can benefit from uh, having it installed. This is another cool one. Um, uh, it's called Black Menu, and it gives you single-click access to all your favorite Google um, products and uh, services. So it just sits right up here. We've got this kind of colored um, icon. But when I click on it, I can immediately see um, folders in Google Drive. I can see all my various Keep Notes. But the killer feature for me, what I'm super impressed with, is I can actually see all of my individual classrooms inside of Google Classroom. 
This is a great extension for teachers because if um, you need to go into a class, you know, typically you have to type in classroom.google.com and then you get to the home page and you click the class and you open it up. But with Black Menu, all I have to do is just click and it takes me right to the particular class that I'm interested in. So that can save a lot of time for both teachers and students. It has a lot of customization options. You can configure it uh, exactly the way uh, that you would like it to, uh, to display your stuff. We're gonna wrap up by talking about some multimedia. What I'd like to do is share some ways that you can use images, audio, and video with Chromebooks in your classroom. So let's start with images. Uh, here are a couple of my favorite tools for working with images on a Chromebook. Now the first one is a lot of fun. Uh, it's very simple. It's called Webcam Toy. Now if you're a, a Mac user, you probably maybe are familiar with Photo Booth. It's very, very similar. So Webcam Toy is a uh, tool that lets you take photos with your webcam, but it has all kinds of fun effects that can make you look silly, fun, sophisticated. Uh, it's really exciting, really interesting. This is great for a variety of class projects. Um, anytime you want students to just capture something that's going on in you know, the classroom, Webcam Toy is a simple way to do that. It's a free uh, Chrome app and website uh, that you can use. My own uh, kids really enjoy this one. This is called Chrome Canvas. Um, and this is a uh, touchscreen drawing app. You can just do free draw. This is a, a photo that my uh, daughter uh, drew on my Chromebook. Uh, you can also upload an image and annotate on top of it. So, you know, we talked about um, a couple of different ways to annotate. If you want to do some things that are a little more uh, complicated, maybe you want to work on it over the course of many days, uh, Chrome Canvas would allow you to kind of upload, work on something, save it, and continue on. These uh, two tools here are super slick. Um, one of the primary reasons that I have been using Pixlr is to crop the background out of a photo. I don't have to do that anymore because these two products will do it for me. They're both free. Um, the first one is remove.bg. And if you have a picture of a person, you can just upload that photo and remove.bg will find the person in the image and crop uh, him or her out. It's pretty slick. Remove.bg only works with people. So if you have an object that you wanted to crop out, you can't use it. In that case, I would recommend photoscissors.com. It's kind of the same concept, except that photo scissors allows you to select the item that you want to save and then select the background area that you want to delete. And then it through magic um, will remove that background for you. I've used both of them. They're marvelous and they have saved me a ton of time. Let's move on to audio now. Now, audio is a hot new thing. You think about uh, the rise in popularity of podcasting, about how uh, devices like Google Home, Amazon Alexa are becoming more common and popular. Audio is huge. And I would encourage you to think about how you could incorporate audio into your classroom. Recording audio is unbelievably simple. Uh, this is my personal favorite tool for just recording audio. Uh, it's Cloud Audio Recorder. It's just web-based. It has like four buttons. Start, stop, save, uh, download. That's it. Um, Cloud Audio Recorder can record up to 20 minutes of audio. Uh, it is 100% free and it does integrate with Google Drive. So with a single click, students can send their finished recording to a Google Drive, which is super helpful if you're eventually going to want them to post it to Google Classroom. Um, you don't need to edit. You just click record, you start talking, and you're good to go. Now, if you want to do an audio project, you want to do something a little more sophisticated, something that will be shared with community members, parents, and so on, Soundtrap is my recommendation. Soundtrap is a professional audio editing tool. It has um, some sample music, sound effects. Um, it's uh, collaborative, so you have people working on the same project together. If you wanted to do a podcast or dramatic reading, tell a story, Soundtrap is a marvelous tool for doing that. We're going to wrap things up now. Last uh, tip, tip number 10, some ideas and tools for working with video on your Chromebook. Some of these uh, will be familiar to you. You might have a few new ones as well. Now, hands down, the simplest way for you to get video into your classroom is with, is with this tool here, School Video Recorder. This is a Chrome extension with a single click. Students can record a video using their webcam and then post it to Google Drive. 
If you want them to do a reflection, kind of like a flip grid style assignment, this is a marvelous, marvelous uh, tool. It's very simple, has a single button, um, and it's privacy focused. No one will be able to see those videos except for the person who's recorded them, unless you choose to share them. Now, moving on a little bit further, if you wanna do an actual project with video, I highly recommend Adobe Spark. This is a free uh, tool, it does many things. Video is one of them. Um, this is great at the elementary level to create a simple, short, uh, kind of video slideshow type thing. Um, you can create a project very quickly using Adobe Spark and it looks great. Um, it's a really nice tool. If you want to go even further and do some more professional level uh, projects, I would recommend WeVideo. Uh, this is what I use. This is what I will be editing this video uh, with in just a few minutes once I'm done recording. Um, it has everything you would want. It does green screen, transitions, um, exports in a variety of formats. It is collaborative as well, so students can work uh, together on these uh, if you want them to. That is my 10 tips for working with Chromebooks. I sincerely hope that you picked up a few new things, new ideas, and uh, your eyes have been opened a little bit and uh, are ready to recognize that Chromebooks are not just fancy typewriters, uh, that they can do way more uh, than just type uh, in a Google Doc or do a Google search. If you're interested in more uh, Chromebook tips and tricks, I'm going to uh, recommend you head over to my website, chrmbook.com. This is where I post all of my tips and tricks for using Chromebooks in the K-12 classroom. If you're interested in learning more about my book, you'll see uh, all the uh, resources and links up there as well. There's also a podcast, a lesson library, uh, there's lots of stuff that uh, you can check out there. Thank you for joining me during the Teach With Tech conference. Thank you for uh, checking out this session. If you're uh, interested, if you have any questions about uh, what I presented here today or just general questions about Chromebooks, feel free to reach out to me in the contact information you can see here. You can check me out on Twitter. I'm at JRSomash, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the socials. Uh, you can find me there. Thank you so much. 